channel. This is Curtis, your diagnostic consultant, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to be giving you a behind the scenes look of me uh, consulting a client. At the same time, um, I'm probably thinking about starting a series where uh, to get people to start programming, I'm going to find technical service bulletins that solve a specific problem where programming would be the only resolution to get that problem fixed and then that way um, you know you guys can book me to teach you how to do the programming and then you can start your programming career so just to give you a bit of background today we're going to be working on a 2019 Ford Ranger and the client um, he told me that the uh, car gave him this code a P241D um, selective catalytic reduction inducement forced engine shutdown limited power so in essence the ad blue I think he serviced it but the car wasn't starting okay and he said Kurt you know what I had a friend he had the Ford tool and he just did a simple reset and it was working and I said, well, do you know what the name of that reset was? Like, do you know where to go? And he wasn't sure. So I said, you know what, let's uh, investigate in the service information and see what we can find there. All right, so that's one policy that I always uh, preach is always know before you go because it, it wastes a lot of time, okay? So what I did was I looked into the uh, service information that you can see here. Let me see if I can pull it a little bit closer. All right, so it's quite big. So this is a TSB, and you can see here um, it talks about the AdBlue warning message, AdBlue low refill to start on the display, on the instrument panel cluster, and the engine does not start. And it has the P241D, which you can see there, then the vehicle is in a no start inducement state. If the vehicle does not exit uh, the no start level inducement state after filling the reductant tank, the probable cause is the PCM software. All right? So um, that just told me right away it needs to be flash programmed. Okay, and it says here uh, reprogram the PCM and then. Um, do the accelerometer reset. Hope I set that properly. Okay, so you can look here, it tells you everything. It tells you how to do it and stuff like that. And at the bottom here, it shows us the function route. So after we program it, then we're going to uh, run FDRS into the ABS service function to find this uh, calibration. Okay, then it says turn the ignition off for three minutes and then turn it back on and then it should no longer be there. Okay, so what I actually did was uh, I have the session here and uh, I'm not going to do the whole thing because uh, it, it, it kind of took, uh, took a while. But I'll just give you a quick tour of it if I can just get this thing to go over. Okay, cool. So the way this works is these are all the different modules um, that the vehicle has. And when you want to do a particular function, you're going to click download and then it's going to say run. And that will bring you uh, to the next screen. Okay. So right now it's flashing. So as I said, always make sure that you have your battery maintainer, doors closed, ignition on, and uh, make sure you have good internet connection. Now, this client, um, he's actually in Ethiopia, and um, I, I do programming all over the world, but this is the first time I did it there, so this was a success in my opinion. But um, yeah, you're just going to follow the prompts, and uh, you can see here it has the different steps there. All right, and we just let it do its thing. Okay, and this is me talking to him. You know, I'm letting him know what exactly we need to do in terms of the uh, uh, accelerometer calibration reset. Okay, and that's what's great about TeamViewer. Like back in the day, we didn't have this stuff. You have to do everything 
over the phone, but you know, with the complexity of these vehicles now, it's virtually impossible. Okay. So I think after this loads, we're going to be doing the follow-up procedure. Let me see if I can just speed it up a bit. Okay, module software has been updated. So that's the latest calibration file. We're going to click OK. And uh, we're going to follow the prompts. Turn the ignition to the off position. All right. And, and just to give you guys a heads up, the way the programming training works is if you, let's say, get into a situation where you need to do flash programming, you can book a J2534 training consultation and um, I'll call you up. I'll, you know, if you're brand new, I'll let you know what computer specs you need, how much a subscription uh, will cost, and I'll set the software up for you. And then we'll go to the vehicle and we'll do the programming together. And that way it reduces the risk of anything going wrong. Because the thing with programming, guys, you can look online and there's some uh, videos, but they're always missing details. Like, for example, I'm skipping through a lot of the process. You guys are just kind of seeing the end result. The, the most difficult thing about programming, in my opinion, is strictly the initial setup. You know, manufacturers, they don't tell us anything. For example, um, this is FJDS, okay? And FJDS, oh, it's not FJDS, it's, it's uh, what is it? FDRS. FJDS, that is the uh, programming software for like 1997 to about 2017, 2018 vehicles. This F FDRS is for the newer vehicles. Okay, it does programming, diagnostics, and uh, coding. Okay, so right now we're doing the, the calibration. It's very simple. All right. I'm going to click yes. Ensure the vehicle is on flat ground. And click continue. And uh, in terms of programming, I would say Ford and GM are relatively uh, uh, user friendly. They're, they're good to start off with. Chrysler is a it has a very expensive setup, and if you don't have the right, let's say J two five before, like you can use an Altel one, but it, it's not responsive. You know, like they kind of want you to get their. OEM tool, or let's say a validated J2534. A validated J2534 basically means um, that manufacturer who made the J-Box went to all the uh, OEM uh, companies and got their seal of approval. They tested the J-Box and they got their seal of approval. Okay, Autel didn't. They have like, I think, one for with, uh, I think, Chrys not Chrysler, um, I think it was Nissan. It doesn't mean the J box isn't gonna work. You know, like we were using one right here. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's gonna work. It's not gonna work, but um, you're just, if you do have any issues, you can't contact the manufacturer. Okay, so I think now uh, we did this step here. We turned it off for three minutes and then um, we're going to put the ignition on later and then uh, I'm just rescanning the vehicles and then let's see he took it for a test drive and I think the light is off so that's pretty much it guys um, just wanted to give you a just a behind the scenes look and as I said um, let me know if you would benefit from this because Sometimes this information isn't at least on the internet with these technical service bulletins and by uh, Having this information out it, You know it might just help you. Okay, so with that guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the Video and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye